Hey everyone, what's going on? It's Matthew here. Uh, I'm used to doing live streams on my channel and this is pretty much uh, the same thing. It looks like we've got a lot of people from all over the place and some good center I see in chat, uh, uh, funny answers in there. So I'm excited to present to all of you. I'm gonna do this a little differently than most of the seminars that are going on because I'm using my live stream setup instead of just Zoom. So just be prepared for some slight differences in my little picture and picture doing. But we are talking about essential apps for content creation. Um, definitely hit up any questions that you have portion of the presentings um, to uh, at the end of the session. So we've got essential apps for content creation. Um, and the agenda for this session uh, is to talk about, first of all, the importance of developing workflows. Um, we're going to do an overview of some of the obstacles content creators face. And we'll take a closer look at five apps that help overcome those obstacles. Now, I want you guys to know these apps aren't sort of like the end all be all. There certainly are similar apps to the ones that I am using in my own workflow. So don't feel like you have to use this exact app. app's function is not necessarily that that app specifically is the only choice for you to, uh, you know, overcome these obstacles and enhance your workflows as content creators. So I want to start off with a poll. Um, and the poll is just wanting to know if any of you are a full time content creator. And when I say content, that can be sort of a catch all phrase. A lot of you in this are working with clients and helping them create content for their social media, their website like that. I want to know how many of you have a YouTube channel that you're running or you're on Instagram, on TikTok. If you're on the social media apps, creating original content. Um, and partnering with brands, uh, building community and audience sort of stuff. So um, just take a few minutes to answer that poll and then Samantha will check some results after a few minutes. Um, so workflows. Um, workflows are sort of the cornerstone, I think, of a good content and, um, process. And I wanted to take a look just real quick in this first slide at a YouTube channel that I love and get a lot of inspiration from. It's a YouTube channel called Baumgartner Restoration. I don't know if any of you are familiar. Feel free to let me know in chat um, if uh, you have seen this YouTube channel or if you haven't. Um, but what I love about this channel is all of the different workflows that he embraces to restore these, these paintings. He's a painting conservator. And this is an example of a tool called um, the heat table. And he uses this heat table to flatten out paintings and help remove um, wax and adhesives. Um, he uses this vacuum seal. And he has, over time, crafted these really incredible workflows to achieve um, the goals that he has, which is to conserve these paintings and bring some really damaged paintings back to life um, so, so that they're seen the way the artist originally intended. Um, and workflows from. I'm going to cut in real quick so you yeah, can yeah. see the poll results. Yeah, what do we got? Awesome. Here we go. Let's take a look. Okay, so cool. A, a little less than half of you are full time content creators. And it's certainly possible that some of you are doing content creation part time, but it's just have, you know, good to have a little bit of a break. Who all participating is, um, is uh, a content creator. So that's great. Thanks, Samantha. Okay. So with workflows, we're talking about some predictable, repeatable steps that delivered a desired outcome. And what are the best tools for your work? Workflows, once you establish them, can be constantly evaluated for inefficiency, friction, or pain points. And that kind of goes whenever there's a tool that isn't working, always in and tools and paintings. Um, he uses tools from all over the place, dental tools, carpentry tools. Um, I've seen him, you know, make his tools where he puts like a doorknob on on a steel plate and then puts a piece of wood under that so that he can put even dis evenly distributed pressure on some of his. So we really want to take a look at 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 how we can evaluate our workflows to improve them. And for me, these apps are the result of that kind of mind about, you know, this thing that I do is always a point of friction. Am I going to actually do something about it and find a tool that helps me with that? It's going to continue to endure it. And it's taken my journey as a content creator a long time to really exercise that muscle of stopping what I'm doing and going through this part of my process. You know, we remove inefficiency and friction and pain point as content creators because when we start, we're doing this all on our own, and we really depend on our work to be able to deliver content 
you know, at a fairly rapid pace. Personally, I try to get one video out per week, and then I try to do one live stream per week. And then on occasion, I'll try to throw in a short, you know, something with TikTok, um, you know, cross posting between them. I also have a medium publication that I run. So I try to get a couple article weeks and, and having these workflows, these tried and true um, processes for each of those pieces of content that I generate is really important. So understanding these inefficiencies and pain points can help you to search for tools that make creating content efficient and relatively friction free. Um, and some some examples of obstacles that I've faced in my workflow. One big one is um, adding chapter markers to my YouTube videos. You know, I've been creating content for YouTube for about four years, and I don't think that the chapter feature has been around that long, but it was a really time consuming process to put down things on a YouTube video that would allow viewers to skip to a portion of a video, especially with my tutorial content to skip to a portion of the video that was most relevant to them. So we're going to talk about an app that helps with that process. Um, something else is, you know, I, I do a lot of Apple tech videos and I need to from Apple's latest um, event video. And usually that's only available on YouTube. So what use to rip that content? Um, of course, following all copyright laws, you know, fair use, all that stuff. You guys want really want to make sure, especially if you're in another country, you want to make sure you understand how those laws apply to you with regards to YouTube. I'm using them more as like a media entity that's reporting on something like an Apple event. So I really make sure that I show up just a portion of the video and then of course give credit on screen so that I'm following all the rules that YouTube puts out for people in the US creating content. But what's an app that you can use to pull a YouTube video um, and then include it in your video? Um, something as simple as managing your storage on your Mac or your RAM on your Mac. There's been a lot of issues for people dealing with memory leaks. And is there an app that can help you with that obstacle? Um, simply creating thumbnails. You know, as a content creator, we have to create thumbnails that win the click. What tools are out there that are relatively frustration free and not terribly expensive that can allow us to take our vision for a translate it um, onto, you know, onto an image that we create with a certain app. Um, and then for me, another one is ideas down on paper, you know, and have these sort of flight moments where I shop or I just got out of a movie at the movie theater or I'm watching television at home and somehow like ideas are downloading my workflows, what app that can help you to take those ideas get them on paper so that you don't lose those. Um, so let's start with another, or let's continue with another poll. Um, is your main platform for content? And obviously this pertains to the full-time content creators and the part-timers. Obviously we create content for multiple platforms, but if you had to pick one that is your main outlet, like me, um, it's YouTube, which one um, do you feel is the main platform for you and your content creation? And then Samantha, after a minute or two, let me know what um, our answers are. Okay, so the first app we're going to take a look at, and I promise I'll get out of the keynote, here, take a look at, um, at some of these apps in action. The first app we're going to take a look at is an app called Creator's Best Friend, and this works with Final Cut Pro. It's a standalone app that's available in the App Store, but it's also a Final Cut Pro extension. Um, Creator's Best, Best Friend works where you can place chapter markers in your timeline and you can double click to enter that text that denotes what the chapter is. So let's take a look. I'm going to switch over to Final Cut Pro here. Um, I'm gonna let's take interject a real quick with the results. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Oh. Um, all right, so what do we got? Okay, cool. All right. So we've got YouTube predominantly, Instagram, then TikTok, and we have one Twitch creator, which is great. Um, so, so Twitch, huh? Interesting. Okay, I'm not curious. About, I'm curious about Twitch because I, I don't use Twitch, but I use TikTok. I use Instagram a little bit, and obviously my main thing is YouTube. So we have 22 YouTube content creators. Okay, so I'm just going to pull up Final Cut here, and we're going to take a look at um, these chapter markers in Creator's Best Creator. Creator's best friend, excuse me. Um, let's go ahead and bring this up onto the screen. And we're going to pull open a project here. Uh, right. So Creator's best friend, you can see here in the app extension, opens up a separate window in Final Cut. 
There's also a standalone app that you can run that essentially opens. With the app extension, what's really nice is you can click and drag and click and drag a project into the app extension in order to uh, in order to pull the chapter markers from your video. So locate a library that actually has some stuff in it. And let's go. Okay. And then let's go ahead and pull a clip in and we'll start marking this up. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? This is the part where you get to watch the presenter. Uh, their media library here, which is always just so much fun. Okay. No, it doesn't. All right. Let me navigate to it this way. Okay. All right, well, that doesn't wanna work. So that's going, this is going great. All right, cool. So essentially what, what we have happen is, is this Creator's Best Friend app is going to um, create a, a text, text breakdown of your chapter markers. And you can copy and paste those into your YouTube description. Um, and then YouTube's gonna look at the timestamps on those chapter markers, and it's going to break up your video into those chapters. So that process that used to take looking at your video, writing down the, the timestamp, and then manually entering it into the description, which maybe took 10, 15 minutes to do, it reduces that process down to about, I don't know, 90 seconds maybe. And that's really important because though that time saving enhances our workflow and allows us to get our videos out much faster. So Creator's Best Friend, I think it's about $10. Um, and I would highly recommend checking out this app if you're doing content creation in Final Cut Pro um, for YouTube. This doesn't really benefit you for other platforms like TikTok and Instagram. For the Final Cut Pro users out there, um, that's the way that you want to do it. The standalone app, you have to export an XML. It's a little clunkier. So when they transferred everything over into being a Final Cut Pro extension, um, it was certainly a, a great enhancement to the overall workflow. Um, but again, you can drag and drop your project um, as long as you have chapter markers on your timeline. And then in the chapter marker, you can add your text that says like, you know, um, you know, say you're working on a Final Cut Pro plugin called M Film Mat. You can have it say M Film Mat, and that'll be the chapter title in your YouTube video. Um, and then just paste those timestamp chapter markers into YouTube's video description and you're good to go. Um, sorry about not having the Final Cut Pro project working correctly. I'm not sure why it's not letting me import um, this footage from from Finder. It's just kicking it out. It's just an MP4 file, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, maybe we'll do this real quick. You guys can watch me try to troubleshoot this live. Um, we'll just call this Untitled, and then we'll drag and drop this into there. Matthew, you have an interesting question in the yes, Q&A. Like oh, what do we got? What do we got? Uh, we got from Ben. It says, do you have an honorable mention app that didn't make the list? For example, Ooh. a particular workflow that maybe maybe a bit niche. Ooh, that's good. Um, gosh, Jen, Ben. Ben's a good buddy of the channel. He's uh, in a lot of my live streams. Um, is there an app that's a little bit niche? I'm trying to look at my doc here. Um, one that I don't have in this presentation is an app called a better finder rename and a better finder rename is a pretty extensive um, app that kind of renames files better than finder finder can rename your files um, uh, relatively quickly but a better finder rename has a lot of additional options and i use that app to batch rename files a lot of times for my youtube content so that it's more easily searchable um, after the fact once it's archived and so that um, uh, 
so that when I have my smart collection set up in my Final Cut Pro library, the files route to the correct smart collection the way I have them set up. I'm actually going to be going over a better finder rename in my presentation later this evening. Um, so if you want to learn a little bit more about that app being part of my um, sort of app ecosystem, uh, I would encourage you to come and check that out. I'll show you how I use it in my Final Cut workflow for setting up a YouTube video for editing in Final Cut Pro. That should be pretty good. Um, just let me try this again. I think I'm just like brain. Yeah. Okay. So it helps when you don't drag the file to the library. And I think sometimes this happens for uh, presenters who are um, just a little bit frazzled by trying to get all their stuff up and running. So again, just hit your chapter marker. Um, I usually um, just double click on this and then I'll hit like M film mat. This is me picking my nose. Uh, and then, um, of course, sitting at my time, uh, time lapse at my editing edit bay. So that's really great and embarrassing. Um, so marking the chapter, let's just say M film mat. Uh, and then we're going to go here and we'll mark this one. Uh, let's see. Uh, M cinematic title. And we'll make that a chapter marker. Matt, you can't see your screen anymore. Oh, duh. Yes. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's probably a good thing because my time lapse is uh, a little wonky. Thanks for chiming in. OK, so we have some chapter markers here. And then when we open up the extension and pull in this, we can just drag and drop. And of course, there was a problem. I dragged the wrong thing. There we go. Not enough chapter markers. All right, let's get another one in here. Um, uh, film title that to a chapter marker and we'll then okay so <laughs> this is probably not the best clip to show to, because it's the chapter markers are not spaced out the way that it wants so um let me just see if I can adjust this a little bit there we go so then you can see it takes those chapter markers and translates them to a timestamp and you can copy and paste this into your YouTube description. So there you go. That's uh, an example of um, how these chapter markers can be laid out video and then uh, use, using that extension brought in uh, so you can translate them over to YouTube. Um, let's go ahead and switch and we're going to go through. Let's get back in full screen. Actually, we'll leave it like this, I think. So another app um, that we like to use is something called PullTube. And PullTube is lets you take a URL from a YouTube video and drag it uh, into the app and then download the highest quality version of that YouTube video. It's a super simple app to use. And I think this app for standalone is, I think it's like 10 bucks to buy this. Um, you can click uh, the download button and watch it download and then grab it from your downloads folder. So let's go ahead and take a look at that app and how you can pull a video from a URL. So we're going to pull um, Baumgartner Restoration's video and, let me actually... and we'll paste that URL in and it's going to fetch it. And you can see that this video is available in 2160p. All we have to do is click download and it's going to pull that video off of YouTube again. Please observe all um, all locations. This isn't something that is to be abused, but meant to be a tool for pulling content from YouTube to help use in your original content for YouTube. But this is an app called PullTube. It's available as a standalone app. Um, you can just search Google for it, or you can use Set App, which is a great sort of um, alternative to the Mac App Store. And Set App allows you to purchase these apps through a subscription, a monthly subscription, and then you have unlimited access to all the apps through Set App. So this is one that I really like, and it's pretty straightforward. This is not something that is um, terribly difficult to use, um, but it's an essential part of my workflow, especially when I'm doing those Apple Tech videos. Um, those Apple Tech videos where I need to reference the keynote, which is coming up on September 7th. I don't know if everybody saw today, but it's September 7th for the next one. I'm going to have a watch party on my channel. You should check it out. Uh, Maurice is asking, is there something like PullTube for Windows? And I apologize, Maurice. I'm not sure what Windows compatibility there is between something like PullTube and some of the other apps. Sure, there's something out there that is compatible with Windows. I'm just not immediately certain because I only use a Mac. Um, let's go ahead and switch back here to the old keynote and move on. All right. So we got the last poll 
And this one is what video editing software do you use for your content creation? I'm curious what the breakdown is between iMovie, um, uh, Final Cut Pro, of course, which is my editor of choice, and then the other options as well. If there's something else listed in my answers, um, then drop, um, drop that in chat and let me know. Matthew, there's also some questions in the Q&A if you'd like to take yeah. a look at those. We got one from Adam and one from Maurice. Okay, yeah. I answered Maurice's question, so I'm going to go right ahead. Off. Okay, yeah. Um, is it possible that sometime in the future that we can no longer buy the app with one-time payment to subscribe? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of things are headed that way. Um, I think a lot of things... Uh, are moving towards subscription. And one of the apps that I'm gonna talk later, they're sort of, um, the thing that they're doing to differentiate themselves from some of these is they're saying they're not going to uh, be talking about, uh, we are gonna see a lot of that. And that set I referred to, again, being an app store that you subscribe to, I think we're gonna see some of that stuff um, happening more and more. Um, yeah, Mark, that's a good question about Amazon influence uh, influencer. I, I have just started to toe into that. I'm not set up with it, but I, I think that Amazon is definitely making a strong play, especially since they own Twitch, but they're making a strong play to kind of tap into the influencer economy, the creator move more Amazon product. Um, so we've got our answers here. We got four who use iMovie, 20 Dolph, seven Premiere Pro, and then a couple in LumaFusion. Um, and then someone in um, chat mentioned Premiere Rush uh, and InShot, which I'm not familiar with InShot, um, but the bulk of you are all using Final Cut Pro, which is great. Um, okay, cool. So let's move on to the next app. And the next app that I use pretty often here is an app called Clean My Mac X. Now, there may be some of you who are pretty advanced users of a Mac. I was on a live stream with one of my friends, Doc Rock, and he talked about how Clean My Mac X basically takes a host of terminal commands and kind of puts them into a pretty interface. Um, but he, you know, used to work for Apple. I'm not sure if he was an engineer or something behind the scenes, but he knows all these terminal commands that have a lot of similar outcomes to what Clean My Mac can, Clean My Mac X can do. I'm not a big like typing stuff into terminal and doing all that kind of crazy stuff. I'm I'm not quite as an advanced user as that. Um, but I use Clean My Mac X to do a lot of basic things to help maintain my computer. So something that I can do is remove sort of the junk files from your hard drive to free up space. And for some of you who have purchased a Mac with one of the smaller configurations for memory. Um, you uh, you may have uh, you know a lot of issues where you're bumping up against too little free space, and this is a great app to clean that out. Now I know there's a ton of those apps out there. There's a ton of apps that talk about works. Now you Mac X, you understand what it's actually deleting, um, presentations, wipe out the log files for that app, and that might help troubleshoot issues you're having with the app with the folks at Ecamm. Um, I use this app to free up RAM. Um, using the app instead of restarting my Mac. So if I have a memory leak where RAM is going crazy or I um, have Safari open with a bunch of browsers and some app is running uh, or some tab is running a bunch of ads and it's hogging all the resources, I'll use Clean My Mac X to free up that RAM so I don't have to go through the process of restarting my entire computer. And again, we're looking at workflow. A pain point in my workflow was if I had any RAM issues, especially on my Macs, I would have to restart the computer, quit all my apps, and it, you know, it's it's it takes you out of the creative, stops your progress um, for close to you know ten minutes or so. Um, you can easily grab um, that. You can bulk update. Sorry, you can bulk update non app store apps. This is one thing that I really love about this. Uh, so whenever you open up an app and you get triggered with an update, you know that, and especially an app that updates re uh, pretty regularly. You can use Clean My Mac X for, th for it to evaluate all of the. And update them through the app. And I'll show you how that looks in just a moment. You can also get an overview of the files that are taking up most of your space. So let's take a quick look at Clean My Mac X and you guys can kind of get a uh, idea of how it works. Um, let's go ahead and clear all this out. So it's a really cool app. Uh, it is subscription based. Um, and I ended up biting the bullet on this app because we're at Snazzy Labs on YouTube recommended it. And I really 
um, really was impressed with his presentation of this. So, you know, it's something that it can do is just sort of clear out system junk. You can run a scan. Uh, it can look through your mail attachments, um, help notify you if you haven't emptied your trash in a while. It has a little pop-up notification that reminds you to, to, uh, to update or to empty your trash. And the updater is what I really love. This will basically look at all of the apps that don't update through the Mac App Store, and it tells a new version available, and you can select them to update them through this app. Something that always comes up with me, and they even brought it up before we did this session, was make sure your Zoom is up to date, you know, because I could have gone through the process of setting everything up for this session a day beforehand, but then when I actually sat down to log in, um, there's an, it's got to restart that stuff. Use clean my Mac X to get an overview, all of this to be updated. I love it for this specifically. Um, space lens is really cool because it gives you an idea, um, uh, of your folders and some stuff that you can do to quickly tie them up. And then this one's really great. If you're someone that sometimes scratches your head for what's taking up all the space on my computer, this is where it can find file graveyards sort through your files and take a look at files that maybe you can't easily find in your documents or on your desktop, wherever you may store a lot of your stuff and help you zero in on, you know, what's taking up all the space on your hard drive. I know that that's a regular pain point for a lot of Mac users who aren't as good at scrubbing and diving into all the different, um, you know, sort of nooks and crannies of your operating system where stuff can sometimes take up a lot of space. And as creators, we can't, you know, we can't be waiting on, um, on, on, on our hard drive space to get freed up to be able to create this stuff. Um, so Tatiana is asking in the Q&A, you mentioned Doc Rock. Are you an Ecamm fan, Matthew? Also, what is your YouTube channel? Yes, I am an Ecamm fam member. I'm in Doc Rock's Discord, um, and I'm also often in Doc Rock's live streams in the chat, hanging out as um, he's become a good friend of the channel. Um, my YouTube channel is just my name, Matthew O'Brien. Uh, if you go on YouTube and search for that, um, you'll see that I do Final Cut Pro, filmmaking, and Apple Tech videos on my channel. Um, do you know of, and, and Tatiana is also asking, do you know of any apps that do what PullTube does for an iPhone? I don't know of any apps, Tatiana, that, that are... Um, that can do what PullTube does, but do it through the iPad. I'd have to take a look at that. Everything that I'm talking about today is going to be based on a Mac, not through um, an iOS device. Um, so Stephen had asked earlier, will I be talking about any smartphone apps during this talk? And really, I'm talking primarily about Mac-based apps. For me, as a full-time YouTube content creator, I'm rarely spending a lot of time on my phone or my iPad creating that content. Um, I do some photo editing, some very simple stuff with my phone and my iPad, but the bulk of my time is spent either on my, my MacBook Pro or on my Mac Studio in my edit bay. Um, I don't, I'm trying to think of, of, of the apps that we're going to go over, if there's any of them that have an iOS version. The, the last app that we're going to talk about is, a, is compatible with iPad and Mac OS. And we're going to talk about uses iCloud to sync your notes. So we do have one app that is available on iPad, but it's not exclusively an iPad app. Um, so uh, so that's a, a pretty pretty thorough overview of Clean My Mac X. Um, again, this is a subscription based app, and it was tough for me to to bite the bullet on it and 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 subscribe. But I just kept running into RAM issues. And I kept running into, um, on my older MacBook Pro, I had a 256 gigabyte internal drive and I kept running into uh, storage issues. And this would help free up seven, 10, 15, 20 gigabytes at a time um, and allow me to have plenty of room on my MacBook Pro's storage so that I wasn't writing the, my free space, something I do not recommend doing. And that's why when I got my new MacBook Pro, I was fortunately in a place, a larger internal hard drive, and I went with a one terabyte internal hard drive instead of the smallest hard drive, knowing I'd be editing off of external hard drives. So if you guys don't have any questions about Clean My Mac X, um, I'll go ahead and move on. But if you do, if you think of something, go ahead and drop it in the Q&A, and we can always come back and continue the conversation there. Um, so Clean My Mac X, a really great app. I use it 
at least once a week, if not every other, every couple of days to free up um, RAM. It really works great. Do I have it up here? Yeah. So like right here, there's a button and my picture in picture is covering it. So let me pop this down. Um, this, uh, this shows how much available memory I have and I can click this free up um, button and uh, I can free up any memory that I that I need to to kind of stop a memory link or um, you know get things back up and running so that I'm not getting spinning beach ball and that kind of stuff. Um, so the next app that I want to talk about because something that is critically important for us in our workflows is uh, creating thumbnails. So for those of you who are YouTube content creators, you know how important it is to have a thumbnail that wins the click. And for years, I would try to use Adobe Photoshop and um, Adobe Illustrator either to make thumbnails or just other basic graphic stuff for my video editing workflows. And there was something about Adobe Illustrator specifically that just did not, it just didn't click with me. I really struggled with that app pretty consistently. There was something that was counterintuitive about it, whether it was the undo process, and I think they've updated that, but you used to to undo a bunch of steps, you'd have to hit Command Z and then hit Command Shift Z to switch from doing an undo to a step backward. And that just drove me nuts. Uh, and then I remember also in Illustrator, and I am not a graphic artist, I didn't go to school for it. I'm, you know, very much, you know, just do simple things with text and whatnot. But I remember if I tried clicking on an element that was in this, like it wouldn't like I had to go click on the layer. Uh, I couldn't click in the actual canvas on the item wanted to manipulate. And that's something that Affinity Designer lets you do. And I love it for that. Um, it is a vector-based graphics app, similar to Adobe Illustrator. Purchased it three or four years ago for $50. And I've never paid any more since, um, even with all the updates that they've released. I feel like it's intuitive and easy to use. You just click to select an element and they're off and running. Save presets. So if you have you know, a vertical or a horizontal or a YouTube thumbnail preset or a square preset, you can save those, create something new. You can just go to the pixel aspect ratio that you want. And you can also easily move between Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. So for me, you know, maybe there's a little blemish or, you know, something that I need to, um, to need to deal with Affinity Photo. When I'm working on my thumbnail in Designer, I can easily switch to Photo and then bring it back again. Any negative impact to the image so let's take a look just at Affinity Designer and one of my recent um, one of my recent uh, thumbnails. So pretty simple. Set up uh, a photo in my studio. I lit um, the back wall here in the studio that I'm in right now. Took my computer, held it up to camera, knowing I was going to put this text on uh, and that I was going to incorporate this Final Cut Pro logo to kind of look like I'm kind of hugging it or holding it. Um, to help get uh, to help communicate that this is a Final Cut Pro video. So I've got everything in a group over here and let me actually move your picture over here so that you guys can see all that. Um, what I love about this again is I can I can click on a certain element and I'm just double clicking it and I can go to that layer. If I want to go to the photo, if I want to go to the text um, and I if I want to, you know, uh, move around the image in a very intuitive way, I can do that with this app. There's a ton of really powerful tools here, like to do this, this shape mask um, curve on, on my hand here to mask it out. I just used the pen tool to do that around and traced out my hand and then, you know, did a basic mask here um, to isolate my hand so I could put the Final Cut Pro logo on there. Um, but, um, icon. I just did a base of a Gaussian blur on it to kind of match the blur that's on me. And then with the text, very simple again, um, I was able to uh, use this to, um, you know, do different colors, to put a drop shadow on it, to kind of angle it. And something that I wish Affinity Designer would add is a tool that allows you to um, adjust the perspective of a piece of text. So in order to do that, I actually had to switch to Affinity uh, Affinity Photo. So if I go up to um, File and then say Add Photo, it'll switch over to Affinity Photo, which is down here on this window. Stand by. And I can use this Perspective Warp tool to, uh, let me just pull up my group here. 
and we'll pull up the perspective. And it's not going to show it the exact way when you originally do it, but you can, you know, warp this text to sort of match the perspective of your image. And I was able, because the computer is at an angle, I was able to kind of make the text match the perspective that you see with Final Cut Pro here. Just that little extra bit of something that lets your thumbnail kind of feel more visually pleasing to the eye. And then of course, you know, I'm out of focus here, but if I had, you know, any kind of blemish or anything, you know, there's um, a healing brush tool, there's the clone stamp tool, a lot of the tools that you're used to with Photoshop pertain to this app as well, and I'm able to use it for all those all those basic things. And then if I want to switch it back to designer, um, affinity photo goes blank, and then um, designer back and bounce it back and forth between those apps. So those two apps, again, $50 each, um, $100 total, but they really work hand with each other to help me with my um, thumbnail workflow. And I can't imagine crafting thumbnails with anything else. I know there's an app like Pixelmator, uh, there's, which I think is going to subscription if I'm not mistaken. Um, there's Canva, which a lot of people use, and I think these are powerful tools and certainly encourage you to use something that's similar to this, but for $50, a one-time purchase, and you really get the power of Illustrator and Photoshop, uh, you know, this is where I want to focus, you know, my resources when it comes to creating thumbnails. If you guys have any affinity suite of apps, certainly drop them in the q and I'm happy to talk a little bit more about them. Um, app in the affinity lineup called affinity publisher and that one is um indesign app and i have used publisher to do like layouts page layouts you could of course use it for a magazine or a book you know anything like that i use them for uh creative decks for clients um i did uh, a youtube strategy creative deck for a local company that wanted to create a youtube channel and i did it all in and i did it all using affinity publisher um, and it works so similarly, uh, if not identically, to Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. Drag, move stuff around, click. It's intuitive. I feel like I can, in Final Cut, I can edit and create thumbnails and all that stuff at the speed of thought. Like it just really, um, it really well and feels like something that is in of my my mind. I know that's kind of strange, but um, but but it just feels uh, it just feels like I can think it and then I can do it. Um, Ben's asking, uh, Ordinary Pixelmator is going subscription. Pixelmator Pro, which he uses, hasn't had a subscription announcement yet. Okay, good to know. Thanks for letting me clarify that. Um, do I disable True Tone and Night Shift when doing just thumbtails? I, I don't use True Tone and Night Shift at all. I don't really work at my workstation at night to where that blue light is going to really impact my, um, my uh, you know, ability to fall asleep later. Um, but on all of my phones and computers and all that, um, I don't use uh, True Tone uh, or Night at all um, because I don't like when it's colors to without those warmer color temperatures. Um, but for those of you that you know have eye sensitivity or are working at night, um, if you're not doing any color work, you know uh, I think you can really, um, certainly get away with that. So let's get back to the old keynote here, and we're going to kind of wrap things up um, with one more app. And then maybe take 10 minutes to answer any questions uh, or hang out a little bit toward the end of the session. So this is the app that allows me to take whatever thoughts I have in a moment's notice and translate them um, into a note. Um, this is a really great app. It's called Good Notes 5. You can purchase it for your phone, for your iPad, and you can purchase it, of course, on your Mac. And it's really important, if, especially if you're using it with your iPad uh, and your Mac to use the iCloud feature that lets you sync your notebooks and your notes between those devices. So when you sit down at your computer, whatever you did on your tablet, your iPad is available um, immediately. Pencil, I have my iPad mini here um, and it works great with Apple Pencil. Um, I use it all in notes. Um, if I have just like a brainstorming session, I need to get a bunch of ideas down on paper. Um, that's what I use this for. They've got a lot of options for the different types of paper you can use and the different styles of nope, never one document and then send it back to whoever it is you need to send it back to. Real quick, let's see here, what do we got? So this is like my YouTube, see my crazy, like how does he even read any of this? Um, my handwriting is not terribly better when it comes to um, you know writing on a tangible piece of paper, but I can read all this pretty quickly. So. 
Um, this is just some notes on a video that I was going to create for one of my brand part upbeat. Um, and I wanted to just have, um, I had an idea. I didn't end up actually doing this idea for the video, but the partnership um, didn't have the budget for going to this extent. But I think for this one, I was on a plane and I was like writing down all these different ideas on, again, on my iPad. And now you can see I'm on my Mac and everything, you know, same. Um, so this uh, just a really great app for logging any ideas that I have, scratching down ideas, especially when you're in a, a situation where it's not easy to, um, to get out your laptop and type. Now, me personally, and I don't know how I like this, um, I uh, pretty much as fast as I can speak. Like I'm a pretty fast typist. So I tend to gravitate towards my laptop and being able to type stuff into the notes app or uh, a pages document, you know, whatever it is. But there are those situations like when I'm on a plane to use or I'm in the back of an Uber or uh, in those rare situations while we're like on a road trip, you know, I can use this to ideas. Um, I especially keep it handy when I'm watching television. Um, I always have my iPad with me in my camera bag um, and my Apple Pencil charged up so I can get those ideas down on paper. Um, that's a pretty important part of Flow and again, another great tool to help remove any friction or obstacles in the content creation process. Again, the primary thing that I use this for is for brain ideation. Um, there's times where I just want to go to a coffee shop, not have my laptop, just have my iPad and my Apple Pencil and start jotting down ideas for YouTube videos I can create or things I can do to enhance my workflow or just to-do lists. Like what are the things that are on my plate today or this week and how can I just kind of get them out of my mind and onto paper so I can start organizing for maybe a transfer into the Notion app, which is another great app that I use for all of my to-do lists. Um, so, uh, you know, this is, this is a great example of an app that works with iOS and your Mac and it syncs between iCloud. It's, it's just free, easy to use. And I think, I think I paid like 10 bucks for this app. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't have the prices. I didn't remember what some of the prices were because I've had these, these apps for so long. Um, but if you guys have any questions, you know, certainly I'd love to talk a little bit more about, um, you know, what apps are essential in your workflow. Um, there's certainly other apps that I use on a daily basis. And again, I'll cover a couple of those in my session later today where I'm talking about Final Cut Pro and that workflow um, for setting up my YouTube vids. Um, but I'll just throw off a couple examples and you guys can let me know in chat um, you know, if any of these videos ring a bell. Um, so there, uh, uh, let's see, Chronosync. I use an app called Chronosync to back up my edit drives every night at winning. So my big RAID drive that I have a power an identical RAID drive, Chronosync every night tells the main drive to back up to the backup drive. Uh, and that's a great app for syncing huge amounts of files so that it's only syncing what's changed on the A drive to what's to to what to the B drive. Um, I use like Ben, like I, I mentioned before, a better finder rename. I use a really awesome app called NeoFinder. NeoFinder is an app that lets me catalog all of my archive drives. So if there's a drive in my archive closet and a client or for a YouTube video, whatever it is, I want to pull up some old footage, I can use NeoFinder to search my entire archive um, and find out what drive it's on, go pull that drive, and then access those files. Um, so Sky Bailey's asking, my video is so clear. What camera are you are you using? So um, I am using, this is what I use for my live stream setup. And I also use the cinema camera. I currently have the Mark III out. This camera stream setup that it had uh, sin to pro zoom in this video signal and it out to all of you. So it's not, you know, a web, you know, a little on webcam cinema camera. I actually use primarily for client work channels. Um, but now that I'm a full-time YouTuber, I'm not using those cameras as much for um, client work. So I usually have this C300 ready to go um, on on the on these live streams. Um, the other thing that helps my uh, speaking of workflows, basically I want to be able to flip a switch and have all my lights turn on, turn on my camera, and I can stream at a moment's notice. 
because I'm a Final Cut Pro YouTuber and Apple, you know, somewhat regularly on Final Cut Pro or has news that pertains to Final Cut Pro, sometimes I want to be able to live stream very quickly. So I've got a couple of lights here that light up the whole studio. You'd be kind of surprised how many lights I'm using to do this, but I have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we'll count those in the back as as one so six this is like a little prop light seven then i have another one here eight there's one up in the rafter nine there's one above ten there's like ten lights in here to light up this whole back studio which is pretty wild um so those are just some examples of additional apps there are so many that go into the entire ecosystem of apps that help with workflow and that doesn't even touch on um, all the other final cut pro extensions and it doesn't touch on uh, plugins, you know, all the plugins I use within Final Cut Pro to, to create the videos that I create. Um, so it's a, a pretty, um, a pretty elaborate thing. And it all kind of goes back full moment here to, um, to uh, Baumgartner restoration. And again, I really look to him for inspiration for having really tight flows, you know, for me to have an organized space, you know, everything has a, it belongs. Uh, and, you know, the ability to not literally handcraft, I, you know, I'm not a software developer, so I can't write an application um, necessarily, but figuring out ways to automate your workflow and, and all the different things that you need to do to, um, you know, to, again, remove friction, create efficiencies in your workflows. Uh, he does such an amazing job and I aspire to try to have the same things with my workflow. And you can see just in me learning the process of doing a seminar like this with Final Cut and trying to demonstrate Creator's Best Friend, I forget to switch back to my let me know. So trying to import a simple file into a project, uh, like I'm doing it wrong, you know? So. I'm going to go away from even this process and I'm going to be thinking, okay, what were the moments where there was some friction or there was some pain? And what do you need to do to your workflow to make that smooth? Is there an app that you can get that you can, that you can do to uh, help with all of that so that when you do these in the future, like you're presenting as well as possible so that the people in the presentation, you know, if they have to rate you, whatever, go, that presentation was awesome. You know, sure, perfect. But Matt curious about all the tools he has. So add question, speaking of tools, are your lights all LED? Yeah, exactly. The only is this old Richardson here. And this is as a I think it's a Fresnel light. So it's got like an actual like halogen bulb in it that heats up. So that light gets warm, but it's so small that it doesn't like make the room warm. Some of these LED lights can get warm. The one that's creating this edge light right here. Um, that one has a fan that's running. You might not be able to hear it because of noise cancellation, but that one has a fan that um, runs to keep it cool. But yeah, they're all LED panels. Um, most of them are from Aperture. I have from a company called WeLight. Um, and that little panel here that's doing some fill um, from newer. Um, I use some of my secondary light uh, for the live stream, but then my, like, my good lights are for all my main channel content. Um, so yeah, Ben, another question coming in, Ben, buddy. So you, Ben, what time is it? Aren't you up late, buddy? Isn't it like four, seven, aren't you, isn't it like, uh, like 11 o'clock at night, midnight where you are? What's your go-to app for remote reviews for screen sharing picture and audio quality, e.g. sharing your timeline and or output with a director, assistant, or sponsors? So I haven't had to do that, Ben. Um, I'm going to switch back to one here. I have not had to sh remote share a timeline yet. Um, but I do use an app uh, or a website called Frame.io for clients to review edits and then give notes on them. Frame.io, I think I pay, I'm in a, in a grandfathered in plan, but it's $29 a month. And I think I get 50 gigabytes of space and I can upload and edit, let's say from a client for a sponsored video. They can review it, give notes on the video, and then I can pull those notes into Final Cut Pro and start implementing those notes. Um, but if I get to a point where a director, producer, somebody I'm collaborating with needs to sort of sit in on an edit, um, I'm going to have to explore that workflow because that's a whole other thing. Um, so I'd like to figure that out. 
Uh, but yeah, you mentioned Frame.io in your question. Frame.io for sure. That is um, that is definitely my Goo app. I know Vimeo does something similar. Dropbox does something similar. I think some other of those apps, those file sharing apps, are trying to do stuff to compete with Frame.io, um, where they're you know adding the ability to put notes on a video or a photo, that kind of thing. Um, Kat's saying LED is great. It's also good for battery life if used in a remote location. Um, absolutely. Some of my lights with a battery. Uh, uh, I've actually plugged some of them when I had, I had an F-150 that had an inverter in it and I've plugged a light into the truck and run lights off of them. So, uh, you know, I'm in Q and A. This has been wild. You guys have been great. This is my first time doing something like this. And of course I did a little bit with, uh, the final cut situation, not being prepped as well as I should have. Um, but, uh, you guys rolled with it and I appreciate that. Ben's asking again, do you use an app for work-life balance at a glance management? Yes, I use Notion. So I use an app called Notion that does like all of my to-do lists and it lets me organize my to-do list between what I have to do for YouTube, what I have to do in my household, just like household management stuff, um, bills, you know, maintenance around the house, you know, different things like that and, um, and whatnot. Uh, Samantha, you were going to chime in, uh, feel free to, you know. Yes, I was there. just going to say, if anybody has any um, final questions, please submit them in the chat and we will get to them. I meant the Q&A pod. And then to all of our attendees, uh, once you leave the session, there will be a survey. If you could please fill that out, we, it, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, we'll be here for a few more minutes and you guys can ask Matthew all the questions. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not sure why um, I have a project set up for my for my um, presentation later this afternoon and I think I, I, I focused on the keynote a little bit and thought I thought I don't need a demo creators best friend and then kind of decided last second you know well let's just do a demo and I didn't have everything ready for it so I appreciate you guys rolling with uh, me stumbling through Final Cut Pro sort of improvising in the moment trying to figure out what I'm going to do with uh, with showing creators best friend. Let me double check. Yeah. Yeah. And don't... You're doing great. Thanks for the advice. Oslo Norway. Any good app from my coffee shop or on site and need to access something back home? I haven't had a strong need for that workflow. Um, I do have Apple's remote desktop app, but I'll be honest, I got it for free when I was an Apple employee and I have never taken the time to really learn how to use it. Um, typically just use the tools that are in Finder to access my computer MacBook Pro, and I need to see the screen of my Mac Studio when I'm up in my kitchen, let's say, an app that's only on my Mac Studio, something like that. Um, I'll, I'll just use the built-in Finder tools, but so far I have not had to have too much remote desktop stuff in my workflows, but um, Brian Room's got a great answer for you on um, like uh, Jump Desktop, super easy and reliable. Um, so those are things that I'll try to remember um, as I, uh, you know, as I prepare possibly for that workflow. Um, Ben's asking, why do you love helping us learn? And, and that's a great question to wind things down. Um, <laughs> I just love it when someone teaches me something. And that's something that I talk about a lot on my channel. I am not the end all be all person with every answer to every tech question, every Apple question, every Final Cut Pro question. I never sit there over someone's shoulder going, you're doing it wrong. Use my method. It's the best way to do it. Um, I am constantly looking at people's workflows to try to see what are they doing that is more efficient? What are they doing that's better? For me, my ego is checked at the door and the best idea wins. If you watch me work and say, dude, what are you using that tired old app for? use this or why aren't you using command tab to switch between apps or why are you in column view in in finder you know whatever it is show me show me the better way i will gladly adopt that method um, for my workflow if it's more efficient easier more intuitive whatever and i've had plenty of times where somebody's been over my shoulder and going why don't you do this and i'm like how did i not know that and so I try to take all those moments from my experience where people have taught me things or I've learned things on my own and translate them into YouTube videos. Um, Mark is asking, and this is a great question to finish things out. Do you use the Arctic Whiteness app? Absolutely, I sure do. And um, it is great when I let all of my Final Cut Pro libraries 
stack up on my Mac Studio or my laptop or even my big RAID drive. Because I've gotten lazy with deleting generated library files, I go, well, I need to do this in bulk. So let's open up Arctic Whiteness, take a look at all the Final Cut Pro libraries on my Mac Studio. Let's zap all those render files and those optical flow files, any files that are taking up space, get rid of them, and then let's get ready to do a data management session where I'm going to archive all those projects. Arctic Whiteness is a fantastic app, and I'm actually in conversation with them about trying to figure out a way to do some, some sponsored content on my channel featuring the Arctic Whiteness app. Um, so I'm hopefully going to bring some of that content to the channel in the coming months. If not, then maybe we'll just make a video that's like, you know, five apps that I use all the time with Final Cut Pro. I've, I've been meaning to do an app like that. Um, that's about like, uh, you know, five must have companion apps to Final Cut Pro, something of that of, of that nature. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Arctic Whiteness is awesome. And we are <laughs> one minute out. Um, yeah, Tatiana, I think it would be a good video. Um, and and luckily, I have them all in my Good Notes app, all my YouTube video ideas, and then in various notes in a Notion, um, so that I can always keep track um, of what video ideas are coming my way. Um, so yeah, we're at the end of the session, everyone. Um, certainly hope that you enjoyed this. Make sure that you.